Hello YouTube. Well, let's try another video from the Adobe Illustrator 2023 Learn section. I think what I'd really like to do is check out this Build Your Logo with Basic Shapes video. Here we go. And there's some other ones that go with logo, so we'll do those next. All right, here we go. This one was created by Brian Wood. He's an Adobe Learn instructional designer. Build your logo with basic shapes. Hands-on tutorial, beginner, five minutes long. Of course, you know, it'll be a little longer. <laughs> Make a world-class logo for the Beebly brand. In the first tutorial for this series, start by laying the groundwork for the logo art with shapes. We have the Start Tutorial button. We have the Browse More to look at other tutorials. And then we have the Terms information, the Legalese. Assets can only be used in this tutorial and are sample files per Adobe's Terms of Use. You will need to buy a license to use the assets for other purposes. Some of the assets may be available for license on Adobe Stock. Check the asset copy notice, copyright notice for your information. For more information, Oops, let's say that right. Check the asset copyright notice for more information. All right, let's start the tutorial. All right, here we go. Now, this has eight pages. Another tutorial, I've split it up when it had eight pages. I'm going to go ahead and try to do all of these at once and see how it goes. <laughs> it shouldn't be too bad. So, <clears throat> excuse me. On the left are all of your icons for your tools. The right, the top rather, has all of the menus, and on the right side has the panels with information in them. Now you can move all of these around, but this tutorial is more about the logo. So there will be other tutorials that relate to your workspace. Starting with a shape. The logo you are about to create uses single geometric shapes to create the silhouette of a B. Okay. So number one, select the rectangular tool. And where would that be? Let's click on here to go find it. Oh, okay. It is this tool right here. So we'll click on that tool and then press the shift key and drag to create a square on the red dash square. Release the mouse button and then the key. Now this is really important because number one you can always press the shift key to do a lot of things. You can press it to go in a pay, uh, move something in a straight line in any direction. You can press the key to make a square or a circle. In this case we're going to make a square. I want to take you back to this menu as well. So if I click on the menu icon rather, I click on the icon you'll see that the word rectangular and the word tool are both in blue. That means that that's the tool that is chosen, plus there's a dot right here. So that's the tool that the mouse is right now. If I go down here to Polygon Tool, click on it, you'll see the polygon is over here. Click on it again. Uh, I right clicked on that in order to get the menu. <laughs> and then 
you will see the dot move down to polygon and the word polygon and the word tool together here. Those words are highlighted in blue. So that means that that is what will be created when you click and drag over here, a polygon. Okay. If I don't want the polygon, I can hit the delete key because it's selected. And I can go back over here. Now, if I look at this right here, I can always click on learn more to learn more about the polygon. If I right click on this, I can click on rectangular tool to go back up to there. Now I'm going to click on the shift key. I'm going to put the little crosshair in the corner here. If my hand will do that, there we go. And if it doesn't, that's fine. We can always readjust it later. Go like that. Let go of the shift key. Let go of the, <laughs> the mouse button. And look what you have here, a square. Now you can see these little lines over here, which is fine. You can always grab a hold of them with the double arrow like that click and then drag over and then let go and look at that there you go we'll go over more information about this later but we're just going to go right through the video of the logo design at this time okay so let's go to the next one number two Press the shift key and drag to create a square on the red dash square, which we just did. Release the mouse button and then the key. No, pressing the shift key while resizing. Keeps the proportions and doesn't distort the artwork. Three, move the pointer just off any point on the box around the shape. When the pointer looks like a curved arrow, press the shift key and drag the counter, drag counterclockwise to rotate it 45 degrees. So I'll show you what that means. And also you can see right here what that means. See that little arrow, that little arc? So if I go over here, I get that same arc. I press down the mouse button, I go up, I watch the numbers, see the numbers? Look at that, 45 degrees. And then I let go. So now it has been moved 45 degrees. Really easy, not that difficult. We can do this. Next, changing the fill color. Creating logo art in black and white can be a helpful way to focus on the design element. Next, you'll, you will fill the rotated square with solid black. Okay, so number one, click the white color box in the left of the word, to the left of the word fill in the properties panel. Let me say that one more time. Click the white color box to the left of the word fill in the properties panel. So first we have to look and make sure that it's selected and it is. Then we go to the properties panel and these are this is all the information that relates to the item that is selected. We are looking for fill and the white box. We click on the white box. What is selected will be the little box right here that shows the same color up here, which is the color that's inside the box, the square. Pretty easy. Okay, so number two, in the panel that opens, which is this panel, make sure the swatches option is selected at the top of the panel, which is right here. You know it's selected because all of these are swatches and you know it's selected because of the square black box around it. The perimeter is a black perimeter box like that. Okay. <clears throat> and then um, select black. Okay. So black is right here. Look at that. Click. 
All right, so that automatically changes it to black. Press the escape key to close the swatches panel. There we go. In the properties panel, click the down arrow to the left of the stroke weight value multiply multiple times to remove the stroke border. Let's say that again. In the properties panel right here, click the down arrow to the left of the stroke weight value. This value right here is the weight value. And what that means is the border, all the way, this represents the border, okay? And to know that it represents the border, we have black and black. So we're going to click on this for a minute and I'm going to change it to red. Okay, so then, no, let's change it to green so it's different. There, change it to green, right? And that way you'll be able to see it better. If I click over here, and let's uncheck, we're going to click on select, deselect, and you'll see the green all the way around. See? Now we're going to go back up here and we're going to pick the selection tool. Then we're going to click on it again to go back over here. Okay? And then we're going to follow the directions. So in the properties panel, click the down arrow to the left of the stroke weight value multiple times to remove the stroke border. Well, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to click the up arrow and you'll see in the in the design here how it changes when the number is bigger. That way you can see what that number represents. It represents the border, right? Now, I can go down like this, clicking the down arrow and it makes it smaller. And then it says click the, to remove the border. Well, I don't know how far down you want to go. Now, since, oh, okay, right there, right there. It has a line cross, so that means the border is not there now. That's what that means. Okay, there we go. Next, whoops, wait, where's number two? Oh. Uh, oh, okay. We're on number three already. Adding a polygon for the wing. To make the bee's wing, you'll start by making a polygon and turn it into a triangle. One, press and hold on the rectangular tool in the toolbar and select the polygon tool from the menu of tools. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Click. And I did a, a right click. And then I left click on the polygon tool. That's what I did. Press and hold on the rectangular tool in the toolbar. Uh, yeah, you can do it that way too. Just press and hold the button down. And then it'll bring up the menu. Okay, there's always more than one way to do everything. All right, press the shift key and drag from pro approximately the center of the dashed line polygon to make a shape. Release the mouse button and then the key. So we're going to click shift. Then we're going to do this. Then we're going to let go of the button, right? On the right side of the bounding box around the polygon, drag the small diamond wedge, wedge it up to reduce the number of sides to three. Before we do that, I'm going to click the selection tool. Nope, I'm going to click the little hand. 
which is way down here in the bottom. If I click on that, I can click, and that'll take the whole thing. No, that's not what I want. Oops, I screwed up. Try the selection tool. Oh, yep, okay. We all make mistakes, that's fine. Now, I know it's bigger. That's the problem, so... What you do... You can press on a corner, hold the shift key down, and make it a little smaller. Let go of the shift key, and move it over. I think this is more challenging than the square. Huh? What do you think? Hold down the shift key, move it out a little bit, move it down, let go of the shift key. Try to square it up on both sides to make it even. Hold the shift key, bring it out a little bit. Wow, that's difficult. <laughs> Look at that. Ugh. Okay, that's what we got. So now they want you to, on the right side of the bounding box over here, see what they want you to do here. Oh. Hmm. On the right side of the bounding box around the polygon, drag the small diamond widget up to reduce the number of sides to three. So, the, oh, this little tiny thing right here. This has to do with resizing it. No, that's not it. It looks like it is. Hold on. Try again. Okay. Maybe... Wait a minute. Let's see which dot that is. Oh, this one? Okay. Oh, no. No. Yep. No. I'm not getting the right one. Nope. Oh, rotate. I knew that. There we go. There we go. Yep. All right. That's it right there. See this right here? It's a minus and a plus. So that's a minus and a plus, however many sides you want. If I click that and I go down should minus it, but it's adding more. If I go up, it should plus it. Oh boy. Up oh, there it is. It took a while to get that. Okay, I got it. And that's what you have to do. You have to practice. Okay, next. Edit the polygon. So, you can adjust most shapes in Illustrator without stitching, without switching tools. Next, you'll rotate the triangle and change the shape to look more like a wing. All right, number one, move the cursor just off any point on the box around the triangle. When the cursor looks like curved and arrows, Press the shift key and drag the counter clockwise. Drag it counterclockwise to rotate it 90 degrees. So let's start at the beginning. Make the cursor, move the cursor just off any point on the box around the triangle. Okay. That's how you rotate. You see that little arch with the double arrows? Okay. Now. When the cursor looks like curved arrows, which is what this is right there, click, ah,
There we go. All right. Well, it's not quite. Oh wait, I know what I was supposed to do. 90 degrees right there. Okay. Yay! <laughs> now, here's the problem. Look. This is down there and this is down there. So, if I click it and drag it, I should be able to do... Let me see that right there. Line it up a little better. <laughs> It's supposed to, hmm, let me see, if I was to click shift, wait a minute, shift and make it smaller, and then, no, let me see, that's, this is hard, okay, do, do, oh, look at that, okay, here we go. Select the direct selection tool. Okay, that's the second tool down. How do I know that? Click right here and it'll show you. That's the second tool. Direct selection tool, which is the one in blue. Click on that. Then you'll have a light colored arrow. Click once in the blue anchor point on the blue anchor point try this again click once on the blue anchor point on the left side of the triangle to select it then release the mouse this is important right okay click which one the front Trying to figure out which one. Uh, okay. We're going to stretch it. Ah! Wrong one. Nope. Nope. Click once on the blue. Ang oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Click once and then click again there we go that's what it was i forgot then let go you always have to remember that that's always hard to remember but yeah you gotta remember that doing it that way so you click the little blue square right here it's an anchor point click it one time let go of the mouse button then click it a second time and hold the mouse button down and drag it and now stretch it Okay, now drag that point directly to the left to stretch the triangle. Alright. Hmm. To the left. Drag that point directly to the left to stretch the angle. To the left. Oh, no. Oh, we already did stretch. No, let me see. Drag that point directly to the left to stretch the triangle. I did. I think that's where we are. I think that's where we are, yeah. Okay. Hmm, okay. Number five, rounding select corners of a shape. You can round all of the corners of a rectangle or polygon or only certain corners. Yep, there we go. Now you'll round two corners of the triangle. So with the direct selection tool, which we already have selected right there, still selected, drag across the two corners of the triangle on the right to select those two corners. So we drag like this to select them. Okay. And then 
selecting individual points allows you to round just those corners. Right, so use, let's see, we're going to use, um, well, to, to round the corners, drag each double circle inside the triangle towards the shape center. Drag until you see a red highlight indicating maximum roundness. So, let's see, how do you actually... <clears throat> to round the corner, drag each. Ah, okay. So, see the little arch? Click. There we go. Boom. That's it. It's easier than you think. <laughs> Alright, let's move this over. Okay. Now, I want to take this and move this over. No, the hand. Oh, boy. There we go. All right. So, we can go to the next section. Okay. All right. Now, you can divide a shape into two unique shapes using the Shape Builder tool. Oh, yeah, the Shape Builder tool. I like that one. Okay, let me move this back just a little bit. I'm going to move this over a little bit because we're not doing colors right now. Okay, so, hmm, maybe a little bit more, right? We'll just move it over a little bit more so we can still do this. We'll come back to this in a minute, this corner. Okay, so... so Get the selection tool, which is the one on the top, way up on top. Drag across the white rectangle and select the black circle to select both shapes. Okay. Like that. Okay. And then select the shape builder tool. Okay, where is that again? Well, let's find out. Oh, yeah, this little thing right here. Uh, shape Builder Tool, yep. And then press the option Mac OS or Alt on Windows key and drag straight through the rectangle to remove the areas at the, from the circle. Effectively dividing the circle into two shapes. Oh. Okay, so Alt key, click, and drag like that. There you go. Okay. Turn into a minus sign when you press. See, you have a plus sign or the Alt key will make it a minus sign. Just like that. There. Okay, next. Two more screens. The last part of the B logo art, you'll create in the tutorial the body segment, which you'll make by drawing a line. Hmm. All right. Press and hold on the polygon tool and select the line segment. Ooh, hold on a minute. Let's go back up here. Click. Click and hold down. Uh, what? I need to... Um... Uh, let's see. Press it. Huh? Select the line segment tool. Where's the line segment tool? Let's take a look. It's right above it. Press and hold on the polygon tool and select the line segment tool. Hmm. 
press and hold. I, this one first beginning where it says press and hold on the polygon tool, I don't get. Line segment tools in another uh, another menu, so I'm not sure why it says that. Press and hold, press the shift key so the line you make will be perfectly horizontal and drag across the green dash line, which is this right here. Okay, so once again, if you want something that's a straight line, there you go. Click, okay. All right. All right, release really in the pilot in the properties panel. Change the size of the stroke border, as shown in the sh shape. We have to move this out of the way. We we'll have to move it over here. So, <laughs> oh, twenty. We want this to be twenty. That's why that's what they're looking at right here. All right, and we have it green right now. <laughs> We're gonna go back in here and click it and turn it back to black. Click, there we go, and then click again. Okay, in the properties panel, change, change size 20. Okay, good. All right, now with the main shapes created, you can now assemble the V. So select the selection tool. Move this out of the way. There we go. The selection tool is up here. Once again. Hmm. There we go. Alright. And then drag each of the shapes to make you made onto the corresponding dashed lines, of course. So, this one is going to go here. This one is going to go up here. And this one is going to go here. And this one is going to go here. It's not perfect. Like this one here needs to needs to be shorter. Hmm. If I click it, oops. Click it. No. Click it. No. There. Ah. Trying to click it without the other symbols. Here, do it. There we go. Click it. I'm trying to click that one little dot right there. Ah! See, this one can go down here. All right. Now let's try once again. Click, click, click. Click, click. Okay, I want to click the blue box. Click inside, there we go. Click inside the blue box. Bummer. Well, you can tweak it to make it smaller. I'm just going to leave it. Well, no, I can't leave it. I get it. This is a training video. I have to get it right. So, let me see, uh, click, I need to drag it, Trying to figure out how to um maybe it's this one. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, and 
there we go. Uh, and that's what you do. You just kind of play around with it till you get it the way you want it. Uh, it's close. <laughs> the little point is right there. Uh, like, uh. Now, if this was a client, you know, you definitely want to try to be as perfect as you can. So, try again. See, now it's too small. That's hard to make. Try again. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Ooh, wee. <laughs> Shoot, that really is hard to get perfect. If you get it exactly perfect, good luck. I'm so glad for you. It is not easy. So basically, that's how you make the logo with the shapes like that. And, oops, I didn't get this one right. And when you do yours, you practice more. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to let this video go for now. Oh my goodness. Alright. So have fun with it. And do your shapes and see how they come out. I'm sure they'll be better than mine. <laughs> I'm not a logo maker. Look at that. Uh, okay. Let's have some fun with this. The fun is in the journey. No worries. Alright. Talk to you later. Bye.